Like a backstage pass to the world of fly fishing travel, this is Waypoints, the podcast of destination angling. News and events, helpful travel tips, destination profiles, great stories, and expert advice from some of the most seasoned and experienced names in fishing travel. Waypoints is brought to you by Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures, the industry's number one specialty travel company for the very best insider knowledge, logistical support, and trip preparation. Freshwater or saltwater, international or domestic, Yellow Dog has you covered for your next fishing adventure. And now, your Waypoints host, Yellow Dog founder and director, Jim Klug. Welcome back for our second episode of a two-part series on Fly Fishing Belize. I am joined once again by Matt Kelsick, Belize Program Director for Yellow Dog Fly Fishing, and Brian Gregson, professional photographer, industry titan, and one of the most well-seasoned travelers in all of fly fishing. Gentlemen, welcome back to the program and to part two of our conversation on Fishing Belize. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Well, it's good uh, good to continue this. We have so much to talk about, and we're going to pick up right where we left off in episode one of the Belize series, where we covered Belizean travel logistics, how to get to Belize, the main fish species. We talked gear and equipment, some of our favorite flies, Belizean guides, trip costs, and we covered the lodge option versus the DIY scenarios. That was all in episode one. With this episode, however, we're going to talk about specific locations. We're going to take a tour of the best fisheries in Belize from north to south. We'll break down each region and each fishery and discuss the pros and cons of the different locations found throughout the country. Uh, We'll also discuss what kind of angler may be the best fit for each of these locations. Basically, who should go where and why. So there is obviously so much to talk about when we're, we're discussing Belize. We could easily do an entire episode just on each and every specific region and fishery within Belize. But for the sake of our listeners, we're not going to do that. We're going to consolidate all of these options into one great episode. We're going to share as much information as we can um, and try to get people dialed in. How's that sound? Perfect. Great. All right. Well, first off, despite the fact that Belize is such a small country geographically, it's basically the same size as, say, the state of Vermont or the state of New Hampshire, the fishing options throughout the country are almost endless. Uh, you know, you can find skinny water, flats, fish, flats fishing situations, you know, bay fishing, technical mangrove fishing. You got lagoons, deeper mud flats, skinny reef flats. There is is just all sorts of different fishing and so many different scenarios. You know, when we're talking Belize, I, I oftentimes say that it's as if this country was created with the fly fishermen in mind. <laughs> For sure. You know, great fishing is found everywhere in the country from north to south. The border up, uh, you know, with Mexico and the Yucatan to the north, all the way south to Punta Gorda and where it bumps up against Guatemala and further south to Honduras. But everywhere you go in coastal Belize, you are going to find great fishing. There's no question about it. Um, We covered in the first episode how Belize is home to the second largest barrier reef on planet Earth, the Mesoamerican Reef. Uh, This creates this incredible ecosystem and massive network of keys, offshore islands, shallow water reef flats. Um, It is just ground zero for sensational fly fishing, no doubt about it. Um, This reef is also really important because it protects the Belizean mainland and creates a whole nother coastal ecosystem inside of the reef where you have, you know, these incredible mangrove networks that line the coast. You've got these, you know, uh, coastal lagoons, you've got creeks, you know, coastal rivers that are flowing in north to south and all sorts of expansive kind of softer flats along those those uh, those coastline areas. So, you know, so much great fishing to be found. But Matt, basically, and you talked about this in our previous episode, when we look at the overall fishing map of Belize, you can kind of break the country down into a few different areas. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so you've got, you know, generally there's, you know, three or four kind of areas if you if you want to break it up. You've got, you've got northern Belize, you know, the bottom end of Chetamal Bay and Corozal Bay, you know, up against the Yucatan, um, central Belize, uh, which basically, you know, Belize City down to about Placencia, and, and then far southern Belize. Um, outside the reef, you have the Turnif Atoll, which is kind of its own, uh, you know, special ecosystem. So, you know, by and large, you know, three to four, depending on how you want to cut it, uh, but they're all totally different and, you know, have something to offer for uh, every angler. 
And I know we discussed this in the previous episode. We talked a lot about the, the main species of Belize. You know, we've got the big three, bonefish, permit, and tarpon. Throw snook in there. You've got a number of great secondary species as well, cuda, jack, snapper. How does this vary through each region? I mean, is it kind of the same throughout the country, or do we see a big difference when it comes to diversity numbers and sizes? Brian, what do you think about that? It's it's very diverse. <clears throat> it's all distinctly different. I think that's why we break it down into different regions so it's easy to digest of what's kind of going on there. Yeah, you, you know, the species do live all throughout Belize. You can find bonefish, permit tarpon, kind of anywhere in the country, but there are areas where it's a little bit more defined when it comes to numbers of species, oftentimes size of those species, and we're going to get into that for right. sure. And what you want to do and what your what your expectations are. Yep. Yeah, who you're traveling with. You yeah, know it. They all, there's something for everybody, but you kind of need to have a good idea of what you want or don't want to do. And and I think that's sometimes hard for people to wrap their heads around because as anglers, you're like, oh, please, okay, it's not that big. It's saltwater. All these species are there. How different <laughs> right. can northern to central to southern actually be? And in an earlier conversation, Brian, um, you used a pretty good example about kind of the differences in these fishing areas. And you applied this to the freshwater world. And you, you were talking about Idaho specifically. So you right. got like the Henry's Fork and not that far away. So you've got the South Fork. You're right. Like, oh, well, it's Idaho. It's trout fishing. They must be the same. But they're, he, yeah, they're uniquely dis different. Dis they're, they're uniquely distinctly different. And those come with a different set of um, expectations and realities. And what one angler might think is good fishing, it it might be different of good fishing to an, another angler. But it's all based on like location. If I want to catch a lot of fish. Then I'm going to go to like the South Fork of the Snake, a more of a, a a friendlier catching river. And if I want a more of a challenge, just kind of see where I am with my own abilities and what I want to work on and play a chess game, I'm going to go to say the ranch on the Henry's Fork. And I know that my expectations on the ranch, a good day of fishing is probably like a good day of hunting. You don't have to actually catch a fish or shoot an elk to have a good hunt. Right. You know, and so my so even though we caught one or none, it was an epic day on the on the ranch section. Well, if I'm on the south fork of the snake and that's all I know, and it's more of a I may say more of a, a numbers game, and I go to the ranch section and I tell my guide or I went fishing on my own, I was like, Well, I didn't catch anything. It was a terrible day. <laughs> the expectations aren't really met with the realities. And I think in saltwater fishing I hear a lot is like, well, this place is really good for fishing. And it's like, well, what is that based on? How much experiences do you have in saltwater fishing to base that on? Is this even on one trip, two trips? Have you, are you a seasoned angler? What type of fishing is it? Because I hear this area is not good for permit fishing, but this area is good for permit fishing. And to me personally, with I have a, I sit in a, a a unique position i have a lot of experience in these areas where belize honduras bahamas mexico i've been to each place dozens and dozens of times I had friends that run lodges and I did that on my own and i did that with work but you have to realize that well this type of fishing yes for permit if you get a you know this many or have this many shots that is that's a good day but we're here actually you had a really good day permit fishing it's just the realities and expectations of the location are different and the skill level is different. And I think that's what our job, especially yellow dog is, is to try to identify the expectations and put the, our guests where it would fit best for what they want to do. Yeah. And it's sometimes I think hard to wrap your head around um, applying that principle or that way of thinking to a saltwater environment, right? Much easier when it's, it comes to trout fishing or river fishing. Right. Um, but in the salt, you're like, well, again, country's not that big. You know, it's all saltwater. <laughs> all the same species are here. How, how can it really be different? But I think um, to your point, you know, the concept of good fishing is going to have different meanings based on where you're fishing and certainly where you're fishing in Belize. You know, one area, for example, may yield more numbers, the other, you know, again, if we're applying it to the same species, 
it may be fewer fish, but larger fish, right? Or, you know, one area may offer more consistent shots, whereas right. another area, the shots are a little bit harder to come by, but when they're there, maybe the fish are, you know, a little more aggressive or a little bitier. You just don't know. Um, but that's really kind of the cool thing of the technical aspects of these different areas. Um, you know, they can all offer great experiences, but they can be distinctly different, as you just mentioned. I th- and I think, you know, we we'll say where we live in the in the Rocky Mountains, we we drive by a lot of rivers and a lot of things and we can kind of dif- differentiate things and unless you have a lot of experience and angling days in the salt water for decades not just one trip a year or one trip every five years you only whatever you your experiences are very limited and so you, you can have a shifting baseline a little bit you know and i'm not saying permit fishing is impossible and i'm not saying it's easy but there are more forgiving places to go say permit fishing than and there's some very challenging places and just like bonefish we talked about bonefish before is a very honest fish well how honest are the fish really in hawaii they're super (laughs) honest right because they're super hard and so if i went to say the bahamas and my thing was like i caught five fish a day for seven days and i went to hawaii and fish and i got one fish to eat the whole entire time and then it ripped off the the reef and broke me off it was terrible fishing because i only caught one fish like man you got you fed a good trophy fish in hawaii and yeah. that's that's a, that's a pretty good fishing day yeah and so managing expectations and re- removing preconceived notions yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. not shift yeah. these baselines based on your own limited user experience and it's fishing for you can't control it's it. Fishing. It's fishing. Yeah, you can have a, a never ever, you know, show up me a picture I see it all the time. It's like a 25 pound permit. It's like, is this good? And you're like, holy smokes, you know? And you have a seasoned angler or a friend of mine who's one of the best and they had a tough week. Yeah. And weather's always going to play a part always. of that. We talked, you know, at length in episode one about that, Matt. You know, it's just the one aspect you can't control. People who've spent a lot of time in the salt, who've traveled a lot, they get that. They know that. But that's ultimately what is going to um, define a week as far as fishing action and number of shots goes is, is the conditions and the weather. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, that that's definitely a, a, a question that I get a lot or a question that I ask a lot is, you know, what do you want out of the fishing? Are you going with a kid who maybe, you know, it's a newer thing and, and opportunities and shots and, you know, success and success measured by a fish in hand is that what's important or do you want the elk hunting scenario of there was a tailing permit in a foot and a half of water and it was a really cool experience and that thing gave me the middle fin and took off but that was worth the whole week of that moment and then you know the nice thing in belize is the different regions can you know generally provide for those different needs yeah um 100 percent you know, as you kind of, you know, going into the different regions here, you know, you've got Northern Belize. So let's say, you know, Belize city North to the Mexican border. Right. That's going to be kind of typically your numbers game. You yeah. Know, there's, there's lots of bonefish. There's lots of permit. There's lots of tarpon. Maybe there's small ones. There's some big ones. The water's a little deeper, which is always a little bit more forgiving. That diversity typically lends itself to, more opportunities and when you throw in you know the good old honest bonefish that can typically mean more fish to hand and if that's what you really want then that's a great way to look at that area right um not to say that there aren't the very challenging you know if you want to really catch a big tarpon that's probably a good place to start you know certain times a year you know there's challenges that go with that long casts you know heavier rods bigger fish yeah, so so it really works well. That's kind of the everyman's part of Belize would be the the northern Belize zone. You know, Key Cocker and place like Sea Dreams, Belize River Lodge, on up into Ambergris with you know luxury resorts like Victoria House, great fishing lodges with lots of history. You know, El Pescador, um, those kind of places um, are a little bit more for everybody. And, there, and it's say. diverse too. You have um, the bays. Yep. In the back, you have some flats and some keys. You know, for um, a novice or a beginner angler, it's great. It also has, you know, a lot of challenges for an advanced angler. If you want to go out early in the morning with, like, Gordy and those guys at El Pescador, who, you know, you can go out early in the morning, then you can do that. And we have clients that do that. They don't 
they're fishing that good tide at the right time for the right species and they're very dedicated and singular focused where you're right you might have a family and half my family is going to go to the water tours the waterfall and go snorkeling but i'm going to go fishing today and we just we just want to have a fun day of catching right you know and it's doable well, let's do this. Let's let's start in the northern part of the country and discuss the specific main options in Belize. We're going to move from north to south. We're going to do a basic overview of what each of these fisheries has to offer. I want to talk about kind of the main characteristics of each area, the predominant species found there, how to get to this area, maybe some of the lodge and guide options, and what kind of angler may be the best fit for that location. And again, we'll start north. Let's kick it off with, with Ambergris Key. Now, Ambergris is the most visited, um, highly touristed area in Belize. Probably something like 70% of, of people that go to Belize on vacation, they go to Ambergris. It's the town of San Pedro. It's happening. It's got the bars and restaurants and nightlife and resorts. Very, very popular spot. Um, Matt, kind of from an angling standpoint, describe the area. Yeah, so, you know, Ambergris, it's, you know, the fishing grounds are, are very large. Um, you know, I, I think you could probably almost encompass 200 square miles of where the operations in that region will go. Um, very diverse, lots of bonefish, lots of permit, lots of tarpon. Um, so that's, you know, one of those places where, you know, kind of going back to the, the everyman and, you know, operations, you know, first and foremost, El Pascador Lodge. I, I mean, they've kind of 50 years in business. Right, they yeah. pioneered yeah. that area. They have guides that have you know been generational and specialize in everything. Um, they're, you know, they got their favorites, but, you know, if you want to go catch everything, you know, El Pescador Lodge uh, in Ambergris Key is going to offer those opportunities for, for bonefish and permit and tarpon and, and all in the same day a lot of times. So, um, starting there and then you move a little bit closer into San Pedro proper. Um, you've got, you know, like a Victoria house operation, which is right. classic beach resort. Uh, we work with great guides that'll pick you up right at the resort. Um, very similar fishing to El Pescador. Um, but the experience is tailored maybe to a less dedicated fishing trip. Still works great for hardcore anglers, but, um, it's a luxury yeah, it's resort. A luxury. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of times, you know, with, with, with my wife, she loves the beach in the Caribbean. She likes to go on the boat sometimes. She's not an angler. Right. So Vacation she wants, plus fishing. Exactly. <laughs> she wants the pool and, you know, the, all the fun stuff that goes with San Pedro and, and that area. But if I want the fishing, I'm still getting a great experience. Right. Yeah. And El Pescador, um, one of the most storied lodges anywhere in the Caribbean. Again, they, they're yep. celebrating 50 years in business. Sure. Um, they are kind of the, the fishing epicenter for this part of Belize. Um, they've got, you know, 17 guides on staff, a, a rich history of, you know, fishing focused services and um, some of the most experienced guides in this part of Belize. Um, how do you get to Ambergris? If you're arriving in Belize, what's that look like? Yeah, so I'd say for 99 percent of people, that's. You know, getting into the, you know the international airport there in Belize City, and then a short hopper flight up to San Pedro, and then on to the the lodge. Um, it's about like a fifteen minute flight. Yeah, fifteen minute flight. You're up and you're down. Um, there is also a water taxi that you can do. Um, the operations we work there work with there include that little hopper flight in the package. So it's really easy. You send us your flights, and it's like great. You're on the two thirty Tropic Air flight walk through you don't leave the airport you land on this corner in san pedro they pick you up take you in a boat take you in a golf cart and you're you're there so one of the easiest places to get to your final destination in the country um just because it is so quick um you know if you landed at two o'clock in belize city everything going smooth and we know it's airline travel and all that stuff you could be at your you know destination by four yeah. yeah, easy. Sitting at the bar, drinking a Belican yeah. or a rum right. punch, and, exactly. you know, you've arrived in one day. Really yeah. easy. Tropic Air is super easy. And I think people don't realize it's like a bus schedule mm -hmm. where, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, my flight leaves at 2.05, and it's 2 o'clock, and I just missed it. Uh, what am I going to do? It's like, well, just wait for the next one. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 just not, really it's, over. it's not like a Delta or yeah. American Airlines. It's It's super easy. Well, and, 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 you know, going back to how just small and connected the country is a lot of times the, you know, people at the, you know, the ticket counter or at the gate know the shuttle driver for the lodge. Right. <laughs> so you get there and you say, Hey, I'm going to El Pescador. And they're like, awesome. And they, you know, send Ricardo a text saying, Hey, I got these people here and I'm going to send them on an earlier flight. Yep. Um, or, 
these people just got here. They missed it. They're going to be on the next one. Um, so, you know, Yellow Dog is obviously here to help with all of that, you know, changes and, and, and those dynamics. But the country itself just lends itself to, like, they want to help you out. They communicate and, well to each other. And it's a small, small airport. They don't want you sitting around for longer than you have to. So, you know, the earlier flight is a very consistent thing of, like, they just put me on and we're going. Yeah. Worst comes worst, you just hang out at Jets. You hang out at Jets. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Ambergris, um, it's it's our number one destination as far as numbers go, and for good reason. I mean, again, to summarize it, you got a phenomenal diversity of species. You've got great numbers of bonefish, very consistent numbers of bonefish, whether it's your first time saltwater trip or you, you know, have uh, been all over the world, um, very dependable bone fishing. Um the tarpon fishing is some of the best in Belize that uh, the inside flats between the barrier island of Ambergris and the mainland of Belize itself is an area called Savannah. Uh, it is, uh, those are some of the largest classic style tarpon flats found anywhere on the planet outside of the Florida Keys. Yep. So very, very good for that. And then the permit fishing. Gosh, they also have the years, la- lagoons for the tarpon yeah. you know, on the border. Was, so yeah. if the big ones are kind of. Not and moody. Yeah. And yeah. Then there's always the bay and, and you know, nice juvenile little, fish. Yeah, it's awesome. Absolutely. And the permit fishing, I would argue, I, I mean, I almost think going back to like 1998 with Hurricane Mitch, you know, prior to that time, this was a tarpon destination, right? right? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, big tarpon, and you went to Ambergris for tarpon fishing, and then, of course, there was a bone fishing. Yeah, there were occasionally some permit. We've seen this shift over the last 25 years where the permit fishing on Ambergris has gotten better and better. And... Going back to episode one, yes, you know, the catch and release legislation 15 years ago, you know, the more recent gill net bans, all of that has led to more numbers of fish and, and better sizes of fish. But the permit fishing on Ambergris has gotten legit. And, and 25 really years ago, good. you didn't think of it as a permit destination. No. Now it is. Oh, yeah. It, it yeah. is. And so overall, great diversity. And as far as who should go there, it's it's really, you know, kind of the whole spectrum. If it's your first time saltwater trip, this is probably what we're talking about first for a destination. Yeah. But if you're a seasoned, experienced anglers, you want the challenges, you want the diversity of species, you want the size, they offer that as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And definitely, you know. It has something for everybody and every absolutely uh, ability. Including non-anglers. Very popular for exactly. anglers Absolutely. Well, that's the Ambergris, farthest to the north. We go a little bit to the south. We get to the small island of Key Calker. Talk to us about that, Matt. Yeah, Key, Key Calker is your, you know, classic funky beach town little tiny island um it's it's got the the you know kind of two parts there's a split that was caused by a hurricane that kind of bisects it and um very similar fishing to what you'd see in ambergus um this is a you know kind of been part of the gringo trail of you know caribbean travel you know you go to tulum years ago when it was still cool and then you go down to keycock or san pedro and then down to roatan and so it has that funky traveler vibe there's you know one car on the island that's the trash truck you know it's <laughs> everything like, else is golf carts yeah, right, hostels. Golf carts, hostels walking you know tons of great restaurants fun bars and great fishing uh, yeah you know it's it's going to be one of those places that really you know hits it for the the budget-minded traveler you know a lot of value can be found on key Cocker and um, you're not sacrificing from a fishing standpoint. No, and and maybe more budget friendly doesn't mean lesser guides. Not at all. There's very very. I mean, some of the be- Ken and those guys are very good. Few guides. I mean, a versus Ambergris, there's only a handful of guides on Keycocker, but right. they're super seasoned. They're yeah. really good. Um, it's not the kind of place where. Um, they're going to, you know, accommodate huge groups of anglers because there are only a handful of, right. of guides you'd want to be with. But uh, a little different than the normal lodge situation on Key Cocker, we work with a, a small boutique hotel. You stay at the hotel. The guides meet you there each morning. Um, at night, you're going out into the village for dinner at different restaurants. You're wandering around the sandy streets and <laughs> going to different bars. Super laid back, yep. as you touched on, probably the best price point of anything in Belize. But... To your point, Brian, really good guides, um, if, as long as you're fishing with the right one. Right. That's super yeah. important. Yep. And um, they're really in this epicenter of phenomenal fishing. You know, yeah. they've got some bonefish, but their tarpon fishing and permit fishing down there is legit. Right. And it's the same waters as Pescor and, and Ambergus Cave for the most part. And they can do a little bit more to the south. But everybody there on the island is there for the same reason. Um, I won't say it's a dirtbagging place, but it's a way that you can have a great experience at a lesser 
cost to your budget. Yeah, it used to be a, a you know kind of part of that hippie trail, and yeah. and it was a, a, a Euro backpacker kind of dirt bag destination. <laughs> sure. The village has grown up, you yep. know, better restaurants, nicer amenities, um, you know, some nice hotels, but it still has that cool, funky, laid back vibe it's, of yeah, wandering awesome. the streets, and and it's small. It's um, you know, when you went to San Pedro 25 years ago, that was a tiny fishing village. Right. That's, you know, boomed. That's grown up and it's mm-hmm. quite big now. Key Cocker still has that tiny beach village vibe, which yeah. is really Super cool. Super colorful paintings and signs and buildings. Um, Great characters in yeah. the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to get souvenirs, they have the best price point for the carvers. Oh, yeah. The, the, wood, the wood carvers. carvers. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. We love Key Cocker. Again, really good if you... Um, are looking for a more kind of high value budget friendly trip. That's probably number one on our list. Absolutely. Yeah. Next area, um, the Belize city area. Now Belize city, um, interesting place, right? It's got a ton of history. It's a really neat place to travel around and there's so much to see in the Belize city area. A lot of times people are like, Oh, I, you know, I want to avoid Belize city. I hear it's terrible. It's not, it's like a lot of central American cities. You know, there are some, you know, streets and areas in Belize City, you kind of want to avoid. There's some nice areas of Belize City. Um, but outside of the city, which is closer to the International Airport, uh, is a famous lodge that is really the first lodge in all of Belize, one of the earliest lodges in the entire Caribbean. Um, started in the late 50s, early 60s by the Barothi family and Vic Barothi Jr., who um, fled Cuba um, at the advent of the Cuban Revolution. He used to have a number of fishing operations and lodges in Cuba. When he was, uh, you know, kind of uprooted from Cuba quickly, (laughs) he loaded um, his boats and took his Cuban guides, and he set off looking for the next great fishing destination in the Caribbean. And he came to what at that time was British Honduras. He spent time going all up and down the coast and, and the outer keys and the atolls and the reef, and he ended up building four lodges in the early 60s in Belize, some of the earliest fishing lodges anywhere in the Caribbean. The um, flagship lodge was Belize River Lodge. That was his first. And it's still in operation all of these years later, 75 years later almost. Um, And it just, it's an incredible operation for the history. Um, It's still, you know, in the same family, the Huesners own it and operate it today. Um, It's a little bit, I always describe Belize River Lodge as kind of part fishing lodge, part fishing museum. Oh my God, it's amazing (laughs) what they have in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of history. But talk to us a little bit about Belize River Lodge and and what they offer, Matt. Yeah, Belize River Lodge is that's for the tarpon fanatic. Um, you know, they don't have the beach and the pool and the tiki bar or anything like that. You're there, and and they specialize in tarpon and snook and everything from the classic flat style that are just out of the Belize River mouth. You know, the Belize River Lodge is on the old Belize River. And then they also go up into the rivers and, and mangroves and, you know, the tarpon and snook fishing is, is really second to none anywhere in the world. Um, so strong guides with that history. Um, you know, Mike, uh, who's, who's the owner, I mean, he's probably got a fishing log, uh, fishing log that he talks to every angler when they come back. He's got written down every single day what the tide was, what the weather did, how many did you catch? How many did you jump? How many did you see? Um, so it's, you know, it's very much in that old school fishing, hunting, camp, vein, you know, dark wood. It's stepping back in time, which yeah. is really cool for the right person. Yeah, and, super cool. Um, you know, the, the guides are professional, you know, boats are good. You know, all, all that stuff is just kind of goes hand in hand with it. But um, you're there to fish. I mean, they, they do offer some, some eco tours and, you know, especially for birders. You know, a lot of their guides can do double duty as, you know, birding and fishing. And, you know, if you go up into the, the mangroves, um, that's a good opportunity, but by and large, it's for, you know, anglers and, and tarpon anglers. Yeah, it's not a, a big late night party lodge. No. Um, it's a little bit more of a stoic kind of reserved atmosphere. Yep. But uh, again, to your point, the tarpon fishing and, and oftentimes the snook fishing is as good as it gets in Belize. And some of their guides uh, are seasoned and some of those <laughs> knowledgeable guides out there. Um, and easy to get to. Easy to get yeah, to. Yeah, it's 10 minutes from the International Easy Airport. Easy to get to. Yeah, no Super doubt. safe. Great option if you have two, three, four days. You want to buzz in and buzz out. Um, and, yeah, it's definitely one of our favorites. They run a great operation, a lot of history there. They also, um, the owners of Belize River Lodge, they have a secondary outpost location um, 
off the coast out on an island called Long Key. They have a, a little kind of four to six person operation called Long Key Outpost Lodge, which is right in the middle of some of the most productive flats off the coast. Um, to get to Long Key Lodge, you fly into Belize River Lodge. They pick you up. You know, they get all your paperwork done. They load you in the skiffs and they take you about 40 minutes out to Long Key. And that's your base of operations for however many days you're staying. But Long Key is is just an incredible area. The guides from Key Cocker can fish it. The guides from Ambergris will make a long run down to occasionally fish it. But they all go there for a reason, and that's tarpon and permit. And yep. um, really good numbers. And being at the Long Key outpost location, you can get up, you can fish at the crack of dawn, you can come back, relax midday, you can fish late into the evening. Um, it's certainly one of our favorite spots, but it is, you know, it's a basic fishing camp um, where you're staying. It's a small guest house. It's, uh, you know, you're out by yourself on this little key, but it offers great access to some amazing fishing grounds. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good for small groups, dedicated anglers, you know, it's getting better as, you know, connectivity is everywhere in the world. But for a long time, you know, that was the place if you had to check in at work, not a good spot to go. And it's still pretty limited, but you're sitting in the pole position. Um, so if you can forego some of the creature comforts of, you know, air conditioning and Netflix and those kind of things, um, <laughs> you're there. You know, Jim kind of talked about some of the you know most famed tarpon flats. You know, the Miami Beach flat is right right there and that's one that you know sometimes guides from ambergus will run over an hour to get to and you're right there um so you know for that kind of scenario and that kind of traveler looking to really maximize fishing time you know that stuff there you know around long key is is fantastic oh yeah they're fishing obviously long key they're fishing hidden chicken keys they're fishing uh key chapel right. uh, miami beach st george's i mean all of that is accessible from that long key base of operations Yep. Really yep. good. And especially for intact groups, if you have four anglers, that's a great option. And they can do six. Four is a nice size for their six. If you're all good friends, you can do it. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it maxes out at six and, yeah. and that would be maxed out. Max out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But definitely one of our favorite areas in Belize and very yeah. productive, especially for big tarpon. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, you know, just, just down from that is, is another operation, um, tarpon sands. Yes. Which would be, you know, right there, you know, St. George key, drown keys, basically just opposite on the Miami, uh, Miami beach flat. So uh, another, you know, very dedicated fishing lodge, classic Belizean style, great guides, you know, the ones that are, they're specializing in tarpon and permit. You know, oh, yes, yeah. there's bonefish. They will go get you some bonefish, but you're there for big tarpon, the migratory tarpon and some really big permit. Hey, if you want bonefish there, just catch off the dock. Yep. <laughs> <It's right there. laughs> and and Tarpon Sands is a really cool operation. It's a, a tiny private island where they have, you know, the lodge and the guest house. Again, perfect for intact groups that want their own island to themselves. Um, it's not overly fancy, but it's super comfortable. The food's good. And, and it's all about the access, the immediate access to great flats, great water and long days on the water. Yeah, they, um, you know, you kind of you look at the long key outpost and the tarpon sands operations. Those are the ones, you know, the guides will, you know, make coffee that you could float a spoon in right. at three in the morning and say, let's go. And then you come back, you eat breakfast and then you're out till late because they're not having to navigate the channels and flats and bigger boats. Right you know, so from a safety standpoint, you can spend more time out there because you don't have to deal with coming home at dark. Um, and, and right. you know, navigating some of those challenges. It's one of the only few places uh, that I've ever experienced that I can wade fish to tarpon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do on, have those on white sand flats. And that oh, was yeah. really, I'm used to wade fishing to snook and bonefish and, and permit, but not wade fishing for tarpon. Um, it's a totally different experience to tarpon fishing. It's very, <laughs> in, very intimate. Yep. Yeah. Super cool. Well, we're going to, Go a little further out now um, to a spot that I know we all absolutely love. And this is a an atoll. It's the largest atoll in the Western Hemisphere. It's about 35 miles off the coast of mainland Belize. And this is the legendary Turniff Atoll. Um, Turniff is home to two very famous fishing operations. It is a massive area. It's an incredibly pristine ecosystem. And it's really unlike any other fishery that you're going to find in Belize. It's definitely different. And it, I was trying to think, I think that's the first time 
when we first met Jim was going on the boat ride out there. I, I would think I was shooting for one of the manufacturers out there. And I think you guys had a turn of atoll trust board meeting there. And I think that's where we first met. Um, is a very unique place where there's a lot of family works there. Yeah. Eddie Hyde was one of my first guides. Yeah. Um, and I fished with his grandson, Mike Hyde. Um, and up, or Mike's an Anderson. And yeah. Mark Hyde is out there too, was one of the most phenomenal guides and, and, and actual anglers I've ever been with. I uh, shot a few ads with him for Hatch over the years. Yeah. Multi generational. Multi generational. A, a lot of families have worked on the atoll. And very um, diverse. Yeah. Lagoons, flats, wading, boat fishing, permit. I mean, it's exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt, would you say that um, as far as when somebody says, well, I really want to wade fish when I'm in the salt, that's my number one priority. Turnip is where you start the conversation. Yeah. If you say, I want to wade fish um, in Belize, Turnip is kind of the only option. It's, you know, there's some stuff, you know, North Ambergus, you can do it. Definitely Hopkins to Placencia. There's some situational waiting, but um, by and large, if you like to get out of the boat and walk, Turnip is the only option in Belize. Yep. And, it's, and it's a great option. You know, you're not having a, you know, you're not shortchanging yourself by doing that. Um, it's really productive weight fishing. Yeah, they've got uh, massive oceanside flats. They just go on forever um, where you can get out and, and target, you know, tailing schools of bonefish throughout the day also possibilities for permit so the wade fishing is sensational um i would say that by and large the biggest bonefish you are going to consistently find in belize will be out at turnip you know that close proximity to that deep water um they're not you know dealing with the traffic of the mainland or the boat traffic the cool thing about turnip is when you're there there's only those two operations, and they're geographically they're pretty far apart. You've got Turnoff Island Resort, which is down on the southern southern part of the atoll, down by uh, Key Bokel. and then about halfway up the atoll, which is massive, by the way, uh, on the ocean side is the legendary Turnoff Flats. Um, both are great operations and well known for for diving and fishing, but. You know, for anglers, these are, you know, these are some of the best lodges you'll find anywhere in the Caribbean. They're both good. Um, talk to us a little bit about the difference between Turnip Flats and Turnip Island Resort, Matt. Yeah, you, you know, the, the fishing is very similar. Um, you know, I might give a slight edge on the permit fishing to the southern end with Turnip Island Resort. Um, but by and large, similar style water throughout the atoll. Um, there is a little bit of crossover between the operations, but they, they by and large, stick to their areas. And... Um, you know, deciding between the two, you know, I kind of looked at, are you there for the activities? Are you there to dive? I'm glad you mentioned that, Jim, because it's some of the best diving in the world. Um, are you there to fish? Are you there for the sort of, like, is, is it, if it's purely activity driven, turn a flats hands down. If you wanted to have something a little bit nicer, a little bit better food, maybe, you know, a little bit more modern accommodations, um, but also really great fishing and diving and, and other stuff, then the turn of island resort, you know, price wise, they're very comparable. The guides are strong at both. Um, it's just more that, you know, setting off the water. And and if you're, you know, geared for, you know, we want a nice place, but it doesn't have to be anything overly fancy, turn of flats. You want something on the finer side, turn of island resort. Yeah, but both great fishing operations Absolutely. and some Absolutely. of the best guides in Belize. Yep. Yep. And yeah. And long time guides. Yes. You know, like they might be some overlapping, but they've also been working with each other for 20 plus years. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we talked about how uh, new anglers are really, you know, well situated for, for Northern Belize and Ambergris Key. Turn of a toll is right there. Yep. Um, you know, the guides and the operations pride themselves on, on being able to teach and work with new anglers. And they all have, you know, great selections of rental equipment and little shops there for anything you may have forgot or you broke. And so there's a good safety net there um, for a new angler. So I would put that, you know, somebody who maybe wants a little bit more remote, they don't want the hustle and bustle of the little beach town um, that is San Pedro. The turf atoll is great. Yeah. You're, I mean, it's kind of your own private fishery when you're there for the week. You're not seeing boat traffic. You're not seeing other operations. Those are really the only two games out there. And uh, it is remote. It's pristine. It's visually beautiful. Oh, it's, oh, it's stunning. I mean, yeah. The watercolor. I mean, the, the bays are nice and it's a nice color, you know, and but you really realize that once you get out, 
to out to out 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 to the flats. It's like holy smokes! Like I don't how many colors of turquoise are there? Yeah, the atoll itself at Turniff is spectacular, and it's also one of the most protected areas, really, in in the Caribbean. Now, you know, Craig Hayes, um, his Turniff Atoll Trust um, efforts over the last couple decades have yielded some amazing results. The protections out there are, are stellar and it really makes a difference in the fishing and also the overall experience. I mean, it's a special place. It one is. of our favorites. So totally off the grid, I think, isn't it? The Craig, Craig's, Craig's place, place is. is yeah. yeah. He's, oh yeah. It's all solar and wind. Yeah. And if, yeah. If you're of, you know, the engineering mind uh, and you do decide to take a trip out to turn a flats, get a tour of the power plant. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, when you take into effect you know, all the factors that had to be accounted for to get it to run the way it does, it's one of pretty kind. special. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you get to Turniff? Let's talk about that. Yeah. So Turniff, you know, different than other places in Belize, uh, it's a boat ride. Um, yeah. And because it's remote, a little bit more rigid schedule, um, you know, there's only a couple of days a week that you can go in and out. Um, but you land in Belize city, they pick you up there at the airport take you down to the marina, and then you are, you know, on the boat for an hour and a half. Um, they make the, you know, 30, 40-mile run out to the lodge, and, and that's how you get there. Um, there are helicopter charter options if, if you if you want to do that, and it's a great experience, um, especially for the Turnip Island Resort. But by and large, um, everybody that's coming in, um, you're getting on a boat and, and taking the boat right out there. And, and it's a nice boat. It's a yeah. bigger boat. It's, Big transfer boat. Yeah, and you're covered. It's, you're not going to get wet. Yeah, it's not It's not a panga or a skiff where you're going to get beat up. It's it's a big boat that meant it's meant to make the crossing and semi-enclosed. And, and you know, it's an easy ride. Yeah. And that's uh, one of the few places out there that uses uh, like skiffs, like dolphin skiffs. Right, right. Rather than pangas. Yeah, so if, if you do enjoy the classic bone fishing skiff that you would see in the Keys or the Bahamas, um, that's one of the few places outside of those areas, um, that those are used. Yeah. It's great for skinny water. Great for pulling very skinny water, you know, and, and we touched on the species. I mean, the bone fishing out there is stellar, especially the wade fishing, the wade fishing. for bone fish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the inner lagoon can see some impressive numbers of permit, oh, yeah. um, really year round. And when they're there in schools, I mean, you might see hundreds of tails on a calm morning. It's pretty incredible. The Southern, um, you know, drop, um, by turn Island resort, um, has some massive permit, really <laughs> big permit in deeper water. They've got very good, uh, tarpon fishing. They do get the migratory tarpon that come out. They've got year round juvenile tarpon found in some of the inner right. lagoons. And a lot of people don't know this, um, Especially the western side of the atoll can be some stellar snook fishing. It yeah. can be really good. Certain oh, yeah. times of the year, um, very dependable. Yeah, and then and, and on top of those, uh, you know, I know that you know lately there's a, a lot of people excited about trigger fish. Right. And some of those reef, you know, there's parrot fish and and you know some of the stuff that you would see further away, you know, in the Indian Ocean. You can go out there and, and reliably target, you know, especially the trigger fish. Especially, yeah, trigger fishing is good there. Yeah, it's it's one of our favorites. Well, that's Turniff Atoll. Um, let's move further to the south, and let's talk about the Hopkins area. Now, this is uh, an area that really until, I'd say, 10, 15 years ago, wasn't on too many anglers' radars unless they were serious permit addicts. Not a lot of people went to southern Belize unless they really kind of understood what the permit game was and knew how good it could be. But this is an area that is home to uh, the legendary Permit Alley. Um, talk to us a little bit about Hopkins. Yeah, so Hopkins is you know a, another little beach town. It hasn't it's grown over the years. Yeah, it's still you know it's by and large kept village. a lot of its it's it's very Belizean and you know the Garifuna culture down there um, is is really really cool and, and a big part of that community. It is for the diehard permit. And yeah, you know we're going back to the Spring Creek versus you know the big you know tailwater freestone. Um, permit alley is your spring Creek of permit fishing. Um, the operations there, you know, Belize permit club, blue horizon, that's their specialty is, yeah. is permit and shallow water, beautiful water, clear, similar to turnip with the different turquoises and dark blues and, you know, lots of contrast. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's Hopkins. You know, there are some tarpon in the back lagoons. There's some snook along the coast, but you're there for permit. You're there for permit. It's yeah. shallow. I mean, it's shallow tailing, hard bottom coral. Yep. Kind of classic style. Classic of fishing. Yep. Yeah. You're, uh, you're spending a lot of time on the flats looking for tails. Yep. Looking for cruising fish. Um, they're fishing out of pongas. They're pulling along and they're, they're flats jumping a lot, meaning they're, you know, they'll pull up onto a flat. They'll pull the outside edge. They're looking, okay, 
nothing here. Let's go to the next spot. So you're, you're bouncing around to a lot of different areas over the course of the day looking to find those fish. And these guides are really dialed into their permit. I mean, there's 100 pancake flats. Yeah, uh, at least a hundred. You know, <laughs> yeah. they, I mean that, yeah. that that I've fished over the course of my life. Yeah, he can't fish all of it. Um, they're diehard permanent. It's one of the few places in in that I've ever been to where I'm fishing before the sun was rising mm-hmm. to Taylor's. Yeah, a lot of times. You were just there, uh, just there, yeah, a couple I, weeks ago, and, and I a, spend weeks and weeks and weeks there every year. Yeah. I can't. I'm addicted to. <laughs> um, I'm a glutton for punishment, apparently. Yep. <laughs> Um, and, but that's, it goes back to, you know, our first podcast, uh, the episode one of, of expectations. Uh, I know that my expectations are, I'm going to have a, see a lot of tails, but the fish to hand is going to be very limited because every little thing that you make one little mistake, it, it, it hurts you big. Yeah. And it's not very forgiving to where like a deep water permit fishing is. Um, it's still good for the beginner, uh, to learn a lot. The more advanced you are advanced anglers gravitate here there's a lot of wealth of knowledge and and different flies and setups a lot of history of permit fishing I mean, this is where lincoln's there yeah huh? i mean lincoln westby was one of the Will's pioneers there. of permit fishing you know will flack is down there who's you know i would argue one of the most accomplished knowledgeable permit fishing fishermen in the game right. today without oh, yeah. question his guide E-worth. team is the same way yeah but it's uh it's an incredible area Definitely a great fit for those that want to focus on permit, that want to improve their permit game. Um, you know, permit, are, it's rarely a big numbers type experience as far as how many fish you landed. Um, permit fishing is more measured in the number of shots you get, I would say. Right. And then after that, you know, it, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> uh, you know, you, you come back from a trip to Permit Alley and you've got a couple permit for the week. That was a great week. Yeah. No doubt. Um there are some other species down there. There's some tarpon. There's yeah. you know a few bonefish, some snook, and they're getting some better sugars. at, you know, I think consistently targeting some of these other species. But to your points, it's it's a permit focused game, and that's the type of angler that should go there. Yeah, and I, th- I think that you know the challenge with the other species, you know, they are there. Yeah. But unlike northern Belize, where you could you know go from one bonefish flat to a permit flat with tarpon in the middle, when you're on the flats for permit out there, you're really not seeing anything but permit. And right. then if you, you know, if you want to do that stuff, it puts you in a totally separate area. So it's hard to have that diverse day in that zone in particular. You don't have that natural overlap. Right. Yeah. 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 You have to travel to the bonefish versus traveling to the permit. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, they also have the pancake flats, but there's a, a, a reef string that's just to the north and right southern of, of, uh, of Turniff yep. that's 200 miles long. And you have shallow water, ankle deep permit to your left and you have 10 20 feet of water you know like a bay fishing to your right and so that's where you want those two different rods yep with with two different a deep water fly and a shallow water yep. fly yeah absolutely um pretty easy place to access you typically um will fly from belize city down to dangriga and then from dangriga drive to hopkins um if you are at belize permit club they drive you right to the lodge which is situated on the city river um, a beautiful setting at Will's place. Um, if you're going to Blue Horizon, um, I think now you're flying into Placencia and then going by boat out to Blue Horizon, which is on an outer key itself. So, yep. Yep. so yeah, you've got you, you've got the you know the, the Permit Club and Blue Horizon, which are going to be you know your, your stronger fishing operations. Um, there is also Thatch Key out there, yeah. which is a little bit more family friendly. It's fun, you know. There's got a fun bar and you know the saltwater pool, which is you know basically just the fence oh, around the thing, but um, <laughs> you know that one you're, you're flying into Dangriga and it's a boat from there. But um, you know the main two operations, um, which mostly the the style of fishing lends itself to, are going to be those hardcore fishing operations in in Blue Horizon and Belize Permit Club. They're both easy. I just did both of them. I yeah. mean, I, I flew in and out of um, Placencia and, and drove down there from Hopkins, and mm-hmm. it's super easy. Yeah, yeah, super easy. Well, further to the south. Um, from Hopkins, you get into the community of Placencia. We used to call it the small village of Placencia. It's not so small <laughs> anymore. Um, second only to Amagris as far as kind of development and, and growth and right. what we're seeing down there. Um, some nice beaches in this yep. part of, of Belize. Um, but this has always been um, a pretty famous 
fishery, the likes of, you know, the Westbys and the Godfreys, the Garbets. Today, Ewart Garbet is kind of the, the main outfitter down there. But this was access to uh, a lot of great permit fishing grounds in Placencia. Um, what are people finding down there today, Matt? Yeah, v- very similar, just kind of a continuation of the, you know, what you'd see at Hopkins. You know, that permit alley runs right down through Placencia. I think that, you know, as you get down to Placencia, some of that diversity gets a little bit more accessible. Yeah. You know, still largely permit fishing and permit focused, but there's a you know huge lagoon on the backside of the Placencia Peninsula that um, if you are, you know, staying on the peninsula itself is right there, um, which is great for bad weather days, um, so stuff like that. But, you know, by and large, you get the town feel of the beach town and, you know, it's strung out. They've got the sidewalk that runs and, you know, great restaurants and fun bars and, you know, all that great stuff with, you know, really good guides and quality permit fishing. Like you said, you know, the, the families run deep there, the Garbets, the Westbys, the Leslies, the Godfreys, you know. You know. Legendary permit guides. Yeah. yeah. Legendary. Yeah. And there's right now, as things stand, there isn't a dedicated fishing lodge in Placencia. If right. you're going down there to fish, you're probably staying at a guest house or a hotel. And then we put you with the independent guides that we work with that pick you up every morning. We, we put together the packages that way, but it's not like a turn of flats or an El Pescador or a Garbets Lodge where it is a fishing focused lodge operation. In Placencia, you're staying at, you know, any number of different accommodation scenarios and then meeting your guides each morning to go out. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the main one that we work with in Placencia is going to be the Turtle Inn. Yeah. Um, you know, Francis Ford Coppola property, lots of focus on the food. Super high wine. end. Very, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Um, you know, we work with the Earth Garbage out of there. So, you know, top notch guides. Yeah. Um, it puts you in a situation where you can go to town, you can eat on property. It's a beach resort. You know, they've got the adult pool, they've got the kids' pool, that kind of place. Um, you know, great beach and, and all that. Um, but then from a fishing lodge standpoint, you got to get out to the Keys. And yeah. then that's going to be, you know, your Blue Horizon, which would be the most seamless from Placencia. Yeah. So, even further to the south, as far south as we get. Okay, we started all the way up at Ambergris. We've come all the way down. Now we get to the village and the community of Punta Gorda, which is right on the southern border of Belize, right, where it meets up with Guatemala, just across the, the Gulf of Honduras to the country of Honduras. <laughs> Punta Gorda, um, you drive in, and there's a sign that says, Welcome to the Permit Capital of the World. Um, this is one of my favorite places on the planet, um, not just because of the the setting and the scenery and the landscape and the access to the flats, but because of the people down there, um, namely the Garbett family. Um, talk to us a little bit about PG, Punta Gorda. Yeah, Punta Gorda is cool. I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it hasn't been as influenced by tourism as right. some of the other places in Belize. So, you know, the, the town of Punta Gorda and the, and the whole Toledo district down there by and large is very Belizean. And you know, there are a couple of resorts and hotels, but you know, it, it hasn't been whitewashed for, you know, lack of a better term of like, you know, big properties and, you know, all inclusive places on the beach it's and super the, local. It's very local. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's got a good spectrum. You've got the Copal Tree Lodge, which is as nice of a property as, you know, you're going to find anywhere in the Caribbean. Um, and then you've got the Garbage Lodge, which is, you know, value minded, fishing lodge that's for you me know, it's that for <laughs> um, i love that place <laughs> Gar- garbage is you know the hospitality is amazing the guides are great it's it's such a cool spot and then to have you know that option for the dedicated you know boys trip anglers trip you know whatever it is and then the kapal tree where you're getting access to those fishing guides who are incredible but then you've got the finer things they've got you know the kapal tree is going to have their own rum distillery they have a whole you know, range of eco tours, the chocolate making, chocolate making, they grow all their own food. It's pretty in the jungle. It's you're, you're in the jungle. You're not on the beach. Um, it's a hilltop jungle resort where when you're up and top on the villas or sitting on the the deck of the bar restaurant, it's, it's incredibly high end. I mean, you've got howler monkeys in the trees, toucans flying around. You're looking out over the Maya divide to the South and you see Guatemala. Uh, it's just, it's a stunning setting and it's one of the most unique resorts anywhere in Central yeah. America. Yeah. It's very, very high end, very nice, incredible food, a wonderful couples trip, a wonderful family trip. And as you mentioned, they also happen to have access to the same guides out of, of uh, garbets. And right. so, same guides run the fishing programs at both. You know, you can, you're going to get some serious angling opportunities no matter where you stay. It just depends on 
you know, what you're looking for in accommodations and amenities. Yep. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, the uniqueness of that property where you get that jungle setting, but you're 10 minutes down the road from incredible fishing yep. is, is hard to come by. And, and pretty diverse fishing too. You have the lagoons and the bay, and then you still have small pancake flats. And then you still have like the, the sapodillas, you know, yep. which is uh, towards the ocean flats. And it's very diverse with weather. They have options. Yep. There's some tarpon and stuff there too for like rain days or whatever, but yeah, yeah it's um, primarily a permit fishery. It's a hundred percent a permit um, fishery. Classic style. Um, the garbets are, you know, Scully and Oliver, um, brothers to Ewart, um, Dennis, who runs uh, the garbage right. lodge. It's a great family, wonderful people. And, you know, I always talk about the garbets fishing lodges. This is an operation that was built by anglers for anglers. Yep. Um, you know, you're not, they're not going to put a mint on your pillow, <laughs> no. you know, and uh, it's not going to be overly fancy, but it's, it's there for, for people that want to fish. And these, these boys are the best in the game. They're, they're really good. It's unbelievable. And, you know, staying at the garbets too, for it's affordable for right. like a local fishing guide. I mean, that's where me and my friends are going, <laughs> right. you know, and we can go there for a week of fishing for that price is amazing. Yeah. The store is what? 55 steps. You know, to a grocery store, and you can go buy whatever you wanted there to eat, or snacks, or booze, or it's a place just to be free. Do whatever you want, just don't bother anybody else, and you have excellent, excellent, excellent fishing. No, and it's you know one of the you you mentioned town, and and that's one of the cool things there is all of a sudden you know Marin says I don't want to cook tonight. Yeah. Well, any other lodge, like you're dead in the water. Like, okay, we're not eating. <laughs> what do you mean you're not and, eating? And, and Dennis food? is like, Dennis is like, great. We're going over here to this restaurant. Exactly. Um, so you get a little bit of that town vibe as well as a, a traditional lodge setting, um, and just super laid back. They've got a great deck. They've got the little you know marina where you know you can kill some time after dark and a couple of pelicans. Right. With, you know, and it's not a place you see a lot of. You don't see any tourists really walking around. I mean, we walk around. It's super safe. The Garbus is a very well respected name, mm-hmm. and they all can tell by uh, there's you know three guys walking around in sun hoodies, like the, of course they're staying at the Garbus, <laughs> and so you know there's never any issues. It's very friendly. Yeah, it's a beautiful town, um, and I will say for all of these Southern Belize fisheries, Hopkins, Placencia, Punta Gorda, um, very permit focused. Um, because of that, might not be a destination for everybody. If you right. are someone that needs high numbers, needs lots of action, needs right. a constant bend in the rod, you know, maybe look further to the north. But, right. um, you know, permit fishing is, you know, you just got to dedicate yourself to, to going down. You never know what the weather is going to deliver. You might have a tough week. You might have a week where the fish just do not cooperate. Or you might have a week where you're getting, you know, pretty continuous shots each day of the trip. You never know what it's going to deal um, out but you just have to be okay with that as an angler that's yep. permit fishing yep that's plain and simple fishing. you know those are the, the kind of the main areas we talked about ambergris key cocker belize city out to long key we covered turn of atoll um the hopkins and permit alley area uh placencia and then we finished up in punta gorda i will mention there's a couple outlier areas um such as like glover's atoll lighthouse reef the sapodillas that you mentioned um, places like the you know Ranguana, Lime Key. There's some really cool, funky, little out of the way um, islands that are always way, 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 way out. And those are oftentimes as much camping as they are <laughs> staying in a lodge. But those are right. some possibilities as well. Um, and um, you know, depending on how you book them, and and you know whether we book them through the Garbets, through Ewart, through the Garbet family down south, um, you know, can still be fully supported. Um, out at Glovers, there's a couple little you know kind of very basic beach resorts yep. where you can go out and, and get a little bit of guiding, some DIY stuff. But uh, again, it's just that, you know, for as small as this country is, it's unbelievable. Th- there's yeah. so many yeah. opportunities and so <laughs> many options and choices. Yeah. And that is what makes Belize so incredibly unique. And, yeah. I mean, the lighthouse is, I've never been to the lighthouse, which is odd. Yep. I mean, I've been to every <laughs> single flat atoll lodge <laughs> A dozen times, and it's it's amazing that as small as it is, there's still a place I haven't gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and the, for, the, the access there has for a long time been for divers. That's where the blue hole is, right. which is a you know, world famous dive and snorkel area. And um, there's really not many good ways to get there. Um, no, nope. but uh, but yeah, all, all those little outer lying areas hold something special. Sapodilla is definitely out of Garbets or even Placencia. You can get out there and, and there's some really, you know, fun bone fishing on white sand flats, you know, that, that 
you know, doesn't really exist anywhere else in Southern Belize, you know, Glover's for permit, just getting there's a, a bit of a trick. And then, yeah, Lighthouse out beyond Turnoff. Yeah, yeah, you're really out there. Yeah, a lot of options. That's what makes <laughs> this country so great. No doubt about it. Well, as we wrap this up, I want to summarize um, kind of what we've covered by applying a few different scenarios, right, to this overall list of options. And, and Matt, let me ask you this. First off, what are some of your top locations and lodge picks for a family or couples trip? If someone calls you and says, hey, I want to go to Belize. I've got a non-angling significant other. I might be bringing my kids. What are the, the few spots you're talking about first? Yeah, with 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 families in particular, I would go um, El Pescador right at the top of the list in northern Belize. Um, maybe let's say Turnoff Island Resort out on the, out on the Turnoff Atoll, and then um, Capal Tree Lodge down down further south. So you know those would be great for families. A lot of crossover there with couples. Um, I would lump in you know Victoria House there in the north, and then Turtle Inn. Uh, as well for for more couples dedicated vacations. Yeah, great amenities, super nice accommodations. Right. How about Brian? A couple of great Belize destinations or lodges for those that are doing their very first saltwater trip. They want to cut their teeth in the in the flats world. They don't have a lot of experience, but they want to go down and maybe find some success, find some diversity. What are some of your favorite picks in Belize for first time saltwater say, anglers? For first times, you have of course El Pescador as you know of. Obviously, um, turn it flats is a great time, probably for a first timer with a lot of options. Um, Belize River Lodge, you know, because they have access to all the, like juvenile tarpon and snook would be another option. You know, I think for a first timer, ch- charging hard after after permit is might be a little ambitious. So you start with some bonefish and, and juvenile tarpon and snook and kind of get your feet wet. And those guys, those they have a lot of options. Yeah. Um, Good, good recommendations there for sure. Um, Matt, how about those who are looking for wade fishing? They're like, look, I, I want to, you know, use the boat to get from point A to point B, but I love to wade the flats. Where are you going in Belize? Yeah, if, if you're looking to wade, you're, you're, you're going to the turn of a toll. Yeah. Um, and either operation there, kind of as we touched on, on earlier, are going to be great for, for basically anybody either way, turn of flats or turn of island resort. Um, you could maybe throw in like a blue horizon or Belize permit club as well. Um, just because of the situational waiting. But if you are a pure wade fisherman, the turn of a toll. Yeah. Good advice there. No question. And Brian, how about those who are really looking to f- focus on permit? All right. Maybe they've, you know, got a few saltwater trips under their belt. They've now got the bug for trying to catch permit on the fly. Um, what are your top picks, um, for going down after, after permit? I'd say for more of advanced um, permit angler or, you know, intermediate, the entire country has something to offer depending on who you go. If I'm going to El Pescador, there's a couple of guides I'd pick out of there. Certainly they're amazing. If I want the deeper water bay or kind of a K fishing, if I want outer island at Turnoff, to Turnoff area, that's excellent. If I just want 100% only permit, I'm glutton for punishment. I'm going to Hopkins or Garbets. That's yeah. that's where I'm fishing. With. Yeah, Belize Permit Club. Yep. You got Blue Horizon, Blue Horizon and you got the, Garbets. Yep. yep, yep, absolutely. Another really focused. Yeah. Well, great information. Uh, great conversation. Uh, thanks, you guys, so much for sharing your knowledge and your insight and your opinions with our listeners. I think this is a. Uh, been great for anybody that's thinking about a, a first time trip to Belize or a return trip to maybe someplace in Belize they have not been. Um, Matt, where can people find more information and do more research on planning a trip to Belize? Talk to us about some of these resources. Yeah, yeah a, a great starting point would be the Yellow Dog website, yellowdogflyfishing.com. Um, there's some great articles. There's you know definitely more in depth lodge descriptions with rates and you know travel constraints and you know other things like that. Um, you know, you go over to the, the store section of the website for gear. So, if, you know, even if you aren't traveling with us here at Yellow Dog, but you need to get stuff. We've got specific gear selections for the different regions, you know, recommendations on flies and rods and line, you know, all that stuff. Um, got some really cool stuff on YouTube and social media, obviously. Jim, your book, Fly Fishing Belize, if, if somebody can find it anymore. I think we're about <laughs> ready for a, a, a second printing. Yeah. But that's a, that's a tremendous resource. Um that you know, even before coming to Yellow Dog, it, that was like that's the Belize fly fishing bible for lack of the history and the area descriptions. It's a really cool, you know, great images. You know, Tom By from the Drake wrote some stuff in there. It's a really cool book. Um, 
or reach out to me. Uh, you know, my email, Matt at yellow dog fly fishing.com number at the office, four Oh six, five, eight, five, eight, six, six, seven. Always happy to jump on a call, answer emails and, and get you started. Well, I would definitely encourage everybody to reach out to Matt and, and the yellow dog team. Um, again, as we talked about in the very opening of the first episode of this Belize series, you know, this is where yellow dog was kind of born and bred and we love talking about Belize. We love sending people to Belize. We love sharing our knowledge on Belize with people. And, um, you know, there are a lot of options out there in the world of fly fishing. And there's a reason this is still our biggest number one program. It's a very special place. It's a very easy place to reach. And um, it definitely offers something for everyone. So fellas, thank you guys so much, Brian, Matt. It's Absolutely. good to have Thanks, you guys Jim. on Thanks the program. Yep. Thanks, Jim. Absolutely. Well, that is it for this episode of Waypoints. Be sure to visit yellowdogflyfishing.com to plan and research your next fishing trip and to sign up for newsletters and notifications of new podcast episodes delivered right to your inbox. We can, you can also download the latest Yellow Dog catalog, Check out all the pages on Belize and everything you want to know uh, and, and you need to research an upcoming trip. Uh, be sure to join us for our next episode of Waypoints. And remember, no one ever regretted a life of adventure. This has been another episode of Waypoints, the podcast of fly fishing, travel, and adventure angling. Waypoints is produced by Brian Gregson with music provided by the Steep Canyon Rangers. Visit yellowdogflyfishing.com for more destination profiles, travel news, and expert advice, and be sure to join us for our next episode.